the Fanny Bryce Frank Morgan Show. <laughs> Sailors and Marines of the United Nations, a special rebroadcast with John Cotty, Harlow Wilcox, Frank Torres and his orchestra, Hanley Stafford as Daddy, Fanny Bryce as Baby Snook, and Frank Morgan. Put your arms around me, honey, hold me tight, cuddle up and cuddle up with all your might. When they look at me, my heart begins to flow. Then it starts to rockin' like a motor boat. Oh, I never knew any girl. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, and good evening, everyone. Oh, good evening, John. In a dispirited sort of way. Why, Tours, what's wrong? From that dyspeptic look on your face, I'd say your stomach is upset again. Something gives you a pain? Yes, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Trouble on the home front again, eh, my show? Is she still doing her bit at the aircraft factory? With a ruddy vengeance. Instead of enjoying an evening of poker with the lads as I used to, I now have to stay home and pack her lunch bucket. Oh. And she complains constantly. Why, does the food disagree with her? And my wife, it wouldn't dare. <laughs> well, times have changed, my friend. Your wife not only wears the pants in your family, she wears the coveralls, too. But you should be proud, Maestro. Why, some night she may come home and tell you she's working on a new secret weapon. Secret weapon? Mm -hmm. You mean she has some relatives that aren't already living with us? <laughs> <laughs> well, not exactly. You then see, you I... must mean my wife's mother. She's reputed to be America's answer to gas warfare. I... Oh, come. She can't be as bad as that, Tourzy. Why, gas is one of the deadliest concoctions known to science. I grant you that, John. Well, strong men quail at the very thought of it. Did you know that one ounce of certain mixtures is potent enough to knock a thousand men flat? It is? Well, mix me one, Jockey. Watch me bounce. Right. <laughs> Greetings, my panty-waisted pixies. And which one of you thinks has a recipe for this infernal hot foot? Certainly not I, Mr. Morgan. No? In the first place, I never touch alcohol myself. Oh, dear. In the second place, I don't approve of drinking. Oh, and in the third place, That's I... That's enough, Tours. It's a wonder they didn't throw you out of the first place. <laughs> <laughs> never mind. It's a matter of common knowledge that Tours here abjures the flowing bowl, doesn't gamble, has no interest whatsoever in women, and stays home every single night. Isn't that worth something? It's worth a lot, Jockey. Ten to one, he's dead. <laughs> You're incorrigible, Mr. Morgan. Uh, but this is really much ado about nothing. We weren't talking about snot. Uh, we were discussing secret weapons. Oh, sh careful, Jockey. Even the walls have ears. Mm -hmm. And better looking ones than yours, I'll wager. <laughs> yes. Why all the mysterioso? Uh, the only secret weapons we mentioned are known to everyone. Things like, well, the new German rocket cannons on the French coast, for instance. You're right, Jockey. That weapon is no longer a secret. Thanks to me. Although I have asked the authorities to withhold my name in connection with the discovery of their location. Wait a minute. You I have heard of the secret of those rockets? Uh, oh, no. May we? But yes. Uh, <laughs> before you stands operator of X-5 of the British Intelligence, honorably discharged. Frank, yes. even you can't have the brazen effrontery to claim you were a British espionage agent. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a boy. <laughs> Gentlemen, I am about to reveal all. Pull up a spy and sit down. Sit down. <laughs> The dangerous fascination of the intelligence service has always appealed to the seething nerve sons of the Morgan clan. Mm -hmm. From my great grandfather, Paul Beard Morgan, down to my uncle, Paul Steve Morgan. And more than one enemy plan, he's gummed up. Oh. <laughs> yes, the game of international espionage is always played for high stakes, Jockey. But wherever the game is played, the Morgan's unknown is trash. It's tough! <laughs> 
Naturally, when rumors of Nazi rocket cannons on the French mainland reached England last summer, the intelligence division called on me. What were you doing in London this morning? Ostensibly, I was American war correspondent for the Avocado Growers Weekly. <laughs> but actually, I was a British spy, having just returned from a secret mission in Berlin. You were actually in Berlin? Yes, but Berlin isn't what it used to be, Jockey. And in a few more weeks, it's not even going to be what it is. <laughs> But my new mission promised even more excitement, as the general staff assigned me to the task of searching out the locations of the rocket cannon. I was given one day's furlough, which I spent enjoying London's famed attractions. Piccadilly? Well, yes, I picked a couple of dillies, but they were all. <laughs> However, the next night, I was landed on French soil and took cover in a vineyard where I met the wine grower's daughter, Yvonne. <laughs> and a delightful bit of French toast she was, too. Yeah. <laughs> she fell madly in love with me. Okay. 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 In the head scene of the moment, I thought our love was to be a lasting one. But next day, she fell in the wine press and ran out on me. <laughs> Juju Lamour. Yes, she's not bad either. I, I, I made my way through occupied France to Paris, where I contacted the French underground. So happy were they to see me in Paris that they formally presented me with the key to the sewer. <laughs> and that very sewer saved my life when I was seeing the Gestapo. They knew of your presence in occupied France then? Oh, yes. I've been seen frequenting a certain cafe, Le Fromage Ria which is French for laughing cheese. <laughs> this was the headquarters of the underground, which was led by beautiful Babette. What a girl she was. <laughs> was, that, was she a spy, too? The cleverest in all France. In fact, I bestowed on her the nickname Gypsy Rose. No one could get anything on her. I did not. <laughs> it was she who gave me the blueprints for the rocket cannon, which she had stolen from a Nazi officer. Now it was up to me to get this information back to England. How about a short wait? Fine, jockey. Or if you know it's all whack, I'd like to... Oh, no! <laughs> short wait. A radio. Oh, yes. Naturally, I tried that. But the Gestapo raised us before I could put the plans into code. It must have been a most difficult code. It was, of course. An alphabetical code that no one to this day has been able to figure out. What? L-S-M-F-T. <laughs> L-S-M-F-T. How did the Gestapo locate your hideout, anyway? Well, the night before, as I was returning to the cafe, I had a distinct sensation that I was being followed. Was it the Gestapo? No, it was just my shorts creeping up on me. <laughs> I changed into another pair, sent the old ones to the laundry, and the secret was out. How come? Due to a mix-up, a Gestapo agent received my shorts, and he knew at once that they must have come from an American laundry. Why? Well, the buttons were all off. <laughs> Raising the origin of the shorts, the Gestapo followed the trail to our hideout, and I was forced to flee. I grabbed Babette and rushed to her rear door, but she was afraid to go out into the dark alley. But you were with her. Well, that's why she was afraid. <laughs> I left her there and dropped through a trap door into the Paris sewer with her brother Jacques as guide. Jacques. On and on through the murky subterranean passage we struggled. Mm -hmm. At last, Jacques showed signs of collapsing. So to make it easier for him, I got off his back. <laughs> Always, the gentleman. Always. Yeah. Fortunately, we found ourselves near the outlet in the Seine and now searched frantically for a boat with which to cross. Uh -huh. None at hand, we improvised a motorboat out of an old bathtub. But halfway across, it stopped. What was the matter with the bathtub? Leak? No, it needed new rings. <laughs> We began our journey to the French coast. You, uh, you took the practice plans with you, of course. I did? I mean, I did. No. Naturally, I took them, for I was resolved to accomplish my mission or die. Hugging the plans to my panting bosom, I struggled to the coast, only to find the sullen, angry waters of the channel facing me, an impassable barrier. Uh, didn't you have a rendezvous with the commandos? I've had many a rendezvous in my time tours, but never with a commando. <laughs> No, I was dependent upon my wits alone, which as always were equal to the occasion. As always. Studying the plans, I found the location of the nearest rocket cannon, and from where there, it was a simple step to overpower the guards, load myself into the cannon, and shoot myself across the channel to England. Oh, Mr. Morgan. For this feat, I was awarded the BC, the DFC... Stop. Hold it. The Hold RFC it. and the FHA. <laughs> I... <laughs> what is it, jockey? Your earphone stopped up again? No, but you're stopped, definitely. Why? You had to go too far, didn't you, Pancho? No, just across the channel. Just across the channel. Yes. Shot out of a rocket cannon. Yes. Why, anyone with a grain of intelligence knows those rocket shells are powerful enough to blow up a city block. But I've... I've... You'd have been blown two bits by that kind of a load. Eh, uh, two bits. 
Uh, loaded blocks, load. Uh, jockey, my jeering young jackdaw, what would you say if I told you the cannon wasn't loaded with a rocket shell? No, then what was it loaded with? On the way to the coast, I had to pass through the very vineyard I had visited upon arrival. So naturally, I stopped off at the winery. So? So, by the time I reached that cannon, brother, I was loaded myself. <laughs> well, <come on. laughs> John's song this evening is from the RKO picture, Higher and Higher. Its title, I Couldn't Sleep a Wink Last Night. I couldn't sleep a wink last night Because we had that silly fight I thought my heart would break the whole night through I knew that you'd be sorry, and I'm sorry too I didn't have my favorite dream The one in which I hold you tight I had to call you up this morning To see if everything was still all right Yes, I had to call you up this morning Cause I couldn't sleep a wink last night My heart would break the whole night through. I knew that you'd be sorry, and I'm sorry too. I had to call you up this morning to see if everything was. you called. I found out the name of that uh, paper hanger you wanted, Daddy. Thanks, John, but never mind. I'm doing the job myself. Y- yourself? Sure. And I'm practically finished. Oh. Why should I, an able-bodied man, pay a paper hanger for a simple job? But what do you know about hanging wallpaper, Daddy? What do you have to know? You get yourself some paste, some paper, and a ladder. Yeah, but don't forget the most important thing. What's that? You tie snooks in the basement. Oh, no, John. No. Snooks is cooperating with me. He's upstairs right now, mixing the paste. Hmm. What uh, is she mixing it with, Daddy? TNT? Go on now, John. Talk to you later. Okay, goodbye, Daddy. And good luck. Snook! Snook! Yeah, Daddy? What was that crash? What happened? It was Robespierre. He fell off the ladder. Good heavens. Was he hurt? I don't know. He ain't landed yet. Now, stop it. What do you mean he hasn't landed yet? He's hanging from the chandelier. Hanging from the... Rope there. Hang on, baby. Daddy's coming. There he is, Daddy. Way up near the ceiling. Oh, oh quick. Quick, Snook. Stand under him and when he drops, break his fall. Me? Yes, you. Let the floor break his fall. Now, what kind of talk is that with your little brother hanging from the ceiling? Would I let you hang from the ceiling? Would I? Wouldn't you? <laughs> well, I might be tempted. But we can't stand here and argue. All right, Lucia. Daddy's right beneath you. 
Just let go and you'll drop into my arms. Shall I count three, Daddy? All right, go ahead. One, two, two and a half. Who's saying? Say what? Three. <laughs> nice set, Daddy. Oh, where am I? On the floor. My eyes, I can't see. Why can't I see? Because you'll see it in on your face. <laughs> oh, to get off me, little rascal. Ha, ha. Now, pop off. <laughs> no. Where are my glasses? They fell off. Well, find them and step on it. I can't. <laughs> Why not? Because you're stepping on them. <laughs> oh, fine. A twenty-dollar pair of glasses broken. Now, how am I going to finish this wallpaper job? Well, I'll help you then. Oh, a great combination. Me with my subnormal vision and you with your subnormal intellect. <laughs> What's an intellect? Don't concern yourself. You'll never be bothered with one. <laughs> oh, just try to be helpful, Snook, and you might learn something. Hmm, about what? About how to put up wallpaper. Who cares about wallpaper? Now, don't be so smart. <laughs> what is the first thing you need to paste wallpaper properly? The first thing? Yes. A wall? <laughs> no. Paste. What kind of a silly answer is that? Well, don't you need a wall? Of course you need a wall. You can't just paste wallpaper on nothing. Why? <laughs> because you can't. Whoever heard of wallpaper standing by itself in the middle of a room? <laughs> That's where it is now. <laughs> Look, are you going to help me or are you going to stand there making broken down jokes? No, I'm going to help you. Very well. I've already papered three walls, leaving exactly one wall to be finished. Mm -hmm. Now, I select a piece of paper, so... I dip the brush in the can of paste. So? Plop the paste over the wall. So? <laughs> What's the matter? You plopped it all over my face. <laughs> oh. Can't see very well without my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> my face is all sticky. Well, here. I've been off with this piece of paste. Hmm. Okay. Take it off. All right. How do I look now? Put it back on. This is fun. Oh, look. Stop pasting paper all over your face. Well, you tell me. Never mind what I told you. I need this piece for the wall. Uh. Is it on straight? Uh-huh. Interesting design, doesn't it? Yeah. What is it? Oh, it's a sort of a mural depicting the evolution of man. Where's the man? But he isn't up yet. What time did you get up? <laughs> no. I mean, I haven't put him on the wall yet. What you see here are groups of prehistoric fish. Millions of years ago, man started his life as a fish. Yes. Yes. Did you start as a fish? Yes. When did you stop being a fish? <laughs> I never stopped being a fish. That's why I'm married and hanging wallpaper with you. Was I a fish? Yes. In a fish hole? Uh, no, in the middle of a big lake. Is the water deep? Yeah. <laughs> What's the matter? I can't swim. <laughs> oh, stop that. Let's get this wall finished. Now, hand me that section of paper. This one with the elephant on it? That's not an elephant. It's a dinosaur. You've heard of the dinosaur? Sure. Hmm. I heard her on the radio. <laughs> That's dinosaur. I'm referring to dinosaur. Oh. Here's another prehistoric mammal. Looks like a dinosaur, only it's a uh, crossbreed. Bring crossbreed? <laughs> no, it's a brontosaurus. Well, what's a brontosaurus? Well, what's the difference? No matter what I tell you, you're going to say Frank Sinatra. <laughs> so, hand me another piece of paper. Can I climb up the ladder with you? No, it's pretty shaky. You might hurt yourself. No, I won't get hurt, Daddy. I fell off a ladder yesterday, and it was 65 feet high. You fell off a 65-foot ladder and you weren't hurt? Well, I just fell off the bottom rung. <laughs> 
Very funny. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Ain't I funny? Well, just forget it. Direct me while I'm on top of this thing. Is the paper straight? Mm. Push it that way. Here? More. Here? No more. Here? Oh! <laughs> so far. <laughs> what happened? Everything's gone black. Well, take the tail off your face. <laughs> Oh. Snook, the only thing saving you from a spanking is the fact that my glasses are broken and I've got glue in my eyes. You going to finish hanging the paper? Yes. Give me that paper and tell me where it goes. Well, put a piece... a piece here, Daddy. Where else? Right, right here. Where else? Here's an empty spot, Daddy. Oh, all right. Now, have I got everything covered? Uh-huh. How does it look? All right, except dinosaur is sitting on Bing Crosby's shoulder. <laughs> Stop it now. Let's get this room cleaned up before Mommy gets home. Here, I'll carry the ladder and you open the door. What door? <laughs> the door to the hall. I don't see any door. <laughs> no door? Good Lord, did you let me paper over that whole wall? Well, you said you wanted to cover everything. Not windows and doors. No, I've lost my sense of direction. Which wall is the door on? I don't know, Daddy. All the walls look alike. <laughs> well, don't you see any bumps? Uh-huh. There's one right here. Oh, so good. I'll tear off the paper. Hey, what do you see? Uncle Louis. <laughs> What's he doing here? He's hanging on a wall. Oh, you mean a picture. Well, we've got to be smart now, Snook. Yeah. If Uncle Louis' picture is here, the door should be somewhere about there. Mm-hmm. Let's see along the wall. Okay. Oh, this must be it. I can tell by the woodwork. You think you're open, Daddy? Hmm. It's stuck. Push harder. All right. Here goes. <laughs> Daddy! But I found the door. Well, hold it open and find my brush. What for? I've got some painting to do. Morgan Fanny Bryce Show is a rebroadcast presentation for the American Armed Forces and their allies.